Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we thank you for opening your graces, uh, your graces upon our lives, Lord. Lord, everything that we are today is uh, because of your grace, not because of our efforts. That you are uh, convincingly uh, convincing us, Lord, that uh, it is not our effort. It is purely your favor to us, Lord. Thank you for this Bible study. Thank you for continuing this Bible study, Lord Jesus, in spite of many, uh, many uh, difficulties, many uh, uh, situations which are not in favor. But Lord, you made it happen. Lord, we thank you for this. And especially as we uh, celebrate uh, the Feast of uh, the Institution of the Holy Eucharist today, we also pray for all the people around the world that they may, turn, they may turn their hearts towards you. They may be able to receive your favor. They may be open to receive your favor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, uh, friends, good to be back. It's good to be back. Today, there will be the washing of the feet in the church. All right? Um, uh, it is... A, it is a, it is such a uh, very solemn event that um, a lot of us go to see it and we can miss the point. So we are in the Last Supper um, in which Jesus, uh, we are in the Last Supper and reading the account of John. So here we see that Jesus is uh, conveying a lot of things to us and it is in the Gospel of John that the washing of the feet is there. So uh, as he's doing it and he discusses so many things, and uh, John is capturing all of that for us. Uh, and uh, a very important teaching that is there is the washing of the feet, the act itself, and also the teaching of um, uh, friendship over slavery and the teaching of the Holy Spirit, the teaching of the Father. All of this is happening in the, in the Last Supper. So today when we go to church, let us not go to view something. You know, uh, let us go to be part of something. So what we see is what we want to become part of. Okay, so uh, I think some time ago I narrated an incident uh, which changed the life of over 50 uh, people of the sweeping community in Mumbai. You know, 50 uh, families, uh, 50 people had come and they were touched by this act of washing the feet. I, I shared an incident where... A friend of mine, uh, he's much older to me though, a uh, friend of mine about 40 years ago, went and washed the feet of the sweeping community people in Mumbai. And uh, a week after Easter, they landed up at his house, 50 of them, 50 of the sweeper community landed up at, this, uh, at his house and, um, and asked him uh, whether they could also worship the God that... Uh, uh, that, that washed the feet of his disciples. And so that was, uh, from then on, a different, uh, they became a community of Christians. And uh, these 50 and odd people started to send their children. And today their children are well established across the globe. Mm. And uh, they are not, uh, mm, they are looking back with so much gratitude and enabling so many churches to be planted. So what I'm saying is when we look at the symbol, uh, the symbolicness, uh, we can see a nice spectacle, you know, uh, uh, but when we want to participate in it, that is when we will experience the power. All right. So uh, try and uh, see if that can be done. What, what are the ways, you know, some practical ways to suggest? I'm always looking out for these ways because for me, uh, when I say for me, it is not to boast. I, I, it was such a simple thing. You know, evangelism was such a simple thing. It's not an easy matter. It's a simple. Um, uh, and when once I discovered the simplicity of it, the Holy Spirit led me to it. It is, it's become a joy to evangelize. So one of the ways in which you do is look for the downtrodden, neglected, rejected of the community. Now, that doesn't mean you go into the slums and look at uh, people who are in pain. And I'm not meaning that. You know, we meet these people in our day-to-day -day lives. You know, the one who sells the um, uh, the vegetables on the street. I'm not talking about the ones in the cart. I'm even talking about the ones who sell it on the footpath. Sometimes we buy our greens from them, you know. 
uh, then the the people who who uh, here in Chennai there's a, a community where we buy fish from the shop and then there's a fellow sitting outside the uh, fish stall you know they have a small plank of food they'll charge you for cutting one kilo of fish they charge you 20 rupees so they will cut it clean it for you the fish market they will just give you the whole fish they won't do any cutting there so you can't buy any partial fish you know sometimes they allow you so but the cleaning all of that is done by these boys and i find that people will hard negotiate uh, you know for that 10 rupees 20 rupees they will say we are giving you 3 kgs you make it 50 rupees instead of giving 60 we are giving 3 kgs you give 50 rupees and um, largely women you know so there is a psychological reason for that women are oppressed suppressed at home so they will do one up friendship on the street so with the lower community but when uh, we, so these are all this is data so where women are allowed to participate equally at home and given their rightful importance and position where they don't have to be superiors but equals you will find them uh, uh, wanting others also on the street to have equality they are very good carriers they're very good carriers you know and um, uh, that is a very important thing for us to do so when we are talking where when i'm um, uh, you know discussing or meeting with these people on the street especially when i go to buy fish or uh, any greens um, i just buy a little more and uh, give them something and you know uh, what cl class are you studying you know where's your sister where is your little brother he was there last week you know you get into a little conversation and approach them with a smile you don't don't have to talk 5 minutes also with them that one or two minutes of your interaction let there be a smile on your face and they'll keep looking back at you wondering why you're smiling be kind to them you know this uh, uh, this fishing uh, the fish cleaners are my favorites so uh, they just uh, take that so we we try to give them something extra and i said no uh my boss told me to give you something more oh your boss ah unga boss who is your boss i said my boss is a very loving father i call him boss but he's dad then immediately the boy the fishing boy is asking me the the, the cleaning boy are you a pastor he asked me i mean see how quickly they jump to conclusion that means it is there in their mind that some people who speak like this are christians are you understanding see there is so much of that's why i say evangelism is simple it may not be easy it is simple you so these are the thing so then i i make friendship with them i tell them you know next time there are prawns or big crabs you know you give me a call he says anna for that you will have to come 4 o'clock in the morning i say i'll come man you give me a call so he calls me today he called me i said i'm on the road man i'm i'm, I'm getting back so what i'm saying is you develop a relationship and then i uh, he's got a little boy with him who helps him in the cutting i asked him why doesn't this fellow go to school so he got the point what i was so he tells me he he has to go to school he's already finished his degree so basically he's, he's giving he's mocking the little boy but at the same time he's cutting off my conversation so what am i saying so i i get into that and say no come on tell me the truth uh, don't worry i'm i want to help you you know and uh, uh, it's not always about giving them more money it is about that smile that kind of nobody speaks to these people kindly or very few few of us speak to them so what is what am i saying what i saw today if he realizes that i am a pastor or he suspects that i am a pastor i go away without giving him much answers i don't engage in a long conversation i have only sown the seed but if i have done that faithfully now here's the key to evangelization if i have done that 130 seconds or 50 seconds or 2 minutes faithfully if i have done it faithfully god will send somebody to water that seed uh, now that is where we are not willing to open ourselves up you know the cobbler who repairs my shoe we don't throw away footwear we try our best to repair it not not to add to the waste and things we don't want to add to the additional waste but it has given us a huge uh, scope to talk with these people okay. so uh, one of these cobblers you, you know was asked so i was telling him see the place where i live it's very wet and it rains most of the time so i am basically drawing a conversation out of him he was in a boring mood and he says uh, in the rainy season it is like that i said it's not mine in my place it rains always so he looked at me and asked which place i says oot i said ooty he says ah ooty now romba nalla place uh, have you been there see the conversation starts have you been there he says where sir we don't get time from this uh, you know he's given a box to work in you know we don't get time from you i said listen what's your name santosh i said santosh you make time i'll tell you you make time three days you make time you just get on to a bus i will give you a full round of ooty i'll get you to stay and take care of you 
Tell me if you don't have bus money, I will send somebody to help you with the bus money. The guy looks at me like this. Okay. So now we are friends. You know, now he doesn't just repair our shoes. We have some Rexin bags and all of that we take to him. And he gives me ideas how to repair. Sir, you give me one month time, sir. This part you won't get. I will go to bazaar, get it. He still hasn't come to Uti. But every time he looks at me, he says, oh, sir, I want to come. So what has happened is that as long as I'm genuine in my heart, willing to host him, I'm sure the Lord is working and watering that seed. So uh, let's see how we can wash some feet today. You know, I call this as washing of feet. Uh, so one of these days, uh, one of the last years, you know, during Corona, the maid who used to help us at home, she had a lot of uh, problem and she would like to come and work in spite of the corona and she did come and I, we used to pick her up and drop her so that she doesn't get infected and she's also safe. we're doing all of that so i told my wife what would happen if we ask this maid today is good for uh, today is monday thursday so we want you and your husband to come and uh, we'll pick you up and drop you back but we want to pray with you and then uh, at the end of the prayer what happens if we say we're going to wash your feet my wife looked at me shocked because she was the boss. She's the boss of that situation, you see. She, all this love and transmitting love and showing love is all one thing. But it created a shock for her because she never thought. See, it's one thing to understand washing feet and wanting to do it for others. But the people who serve you in your house. Yeah. Then, then she looked at me. I said, why are you looking so strange? She says, no, no, they will miss her understand okay we'll help them to understand no it's very strange and all that i said is it difficult for you to accept or you feel they will find it difficult to accept so when we ask these honest questions um she said uh, i'll think about it. then she said i think they will find it difficult to if she had said i find it difficult to accept then probably the fault lies in me also maybe i'm being oppressive suppressive wherein she finds her freedom she vents it out on the it's like a pecking order you see the the chain of come. She kind of does, um, she kind of uh, lords it over these people. Maybe, I don't know. That would have, but she said, she thought on, she said, no, I think it, they would not understand it rightly. So we gave, but we did, we decided to do something more for them or differently for them, you know, send them some food home. And then we found out that her husband has no feet. He's not. So what, what am I saying? You get into a conversation, ask honest questions. Don't just go for the symbolic act. Mm. There are so many things we can do. The people who iron your clothes and bring it to your home. Maybe you can start a conversation. What are your children doing? I mean, uh, what is that child? Oh, uh, somebody came and said, sir, there's a cycle lying. It's in a bad condition. No, I didn't know whether to own up or not because it was my cycle, our cycle. No, I don't know whether the security, security man. He's pointing out that it's a dirty cycle. Or So I said, okay, what about that cycle? He said, he's asking me, are the cycle are they? So I said, uh, my, it is my cycle. Oh, okay, sir. You see, if you can sell it to me, I will give you some money. My son is Prabhakar. He's looking for the cycle. He's looking for the cycle. So I thought the way he asked me, he's questioning me, why is the bad cycle lying there? You want me to go? So then we uh, decided to give him the cycle. So we took it out to repair it. He's coming with tears in his eyes and saying, sir, you give it to me like that. Why are you repairing it? So I said, I'm not giving it to you, man. We're giving it to your son, Prabha. So he's shocked that we are already connected with the sun without seeing the sun. So now we inquire, how is Prabhakar enjoying a cycle? How is he going to tuition? Are you picking, dropping? No, no, no. After the cycle, he's doing one of them. So we get into a conversation. We are involved, getting ourselves involved in the lives of people. Not that you have to keep one hour time, you know, and go. Because I was part of Vincent de Paul and Vincent de Paul does a fantastic work. They set up our time to go and visit these people. Now our lifestyle has changed. I cannot do the Vincent de Paul bit. That would be excellent to do. But I'm not able to do that. So rather, what are we able to do? As we go out in the street, we, we interact nicely with people. The, the, the Orissa and the Chhattisgarh boys or the Bihari boys who make our tea. Most of the tea making boys are Biharis today. So you chat in, uh, you chat in Hindi with them. When have you gone last to your village? Mulukkab Gaya. Oh, once in a year, they don't give leave and all that. Okay, so um, why do you want to go, man? You have children, wife or something. Yeah, one child. I've seen him only nine months ago. So what's his name? Yeah, we'll pray that you will go. He looks like this. The moment you say pray, he look at you. Because they don't think of a solution. And we are offering a solution in prayer. And we keep asking them, are you getting leave? When are you going? When is this boy? When are you going to see your son? So these are some small ways 
in which we can keep thinking of how to wash the feet of people. All right, let's come to, because we have little time today, I picked a small uh, passage only, small uh, portion only. It is about Jesus teaching about the Holy Spirit. All right, Jesus teaching about the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. 14, 15, from chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Why can't he start that sentence with, if you love me, I will give you, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. You see, love is attitudinal, but attitudinal is important, but it also has to transform into action. So he says, if you love me, and obey. That is, you do a little bit of attempt, you translate that attitude into action, little bit, then he says, then the Holy Spirit is initiated into your life. That is why on the day of the Pentecost, they received the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the gift of tongue because their attitudes changed and they decided to profess. Many times you will see in the New Testament, even before they were baptized, they received the Holy Spirit because they, their action was to confess Christ with their mouth. You know, so uh, it is, they have not been converted as Christians. They have not received the baptism. Uh, they have not received the laying on of hands, but they received the Holy Spirit. So there is something, and it's a very, very tiny step to take it from attitude to action. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Now, if we want Jesus, if we want God, to be with us forever. This is the way forward. That means we express our love to Jesus. Not enough if we say, Jesus, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Now that is attitudinal. That's good because we're training our minds. Um, it might sound like chanting, but I explained last time. It's good to train our minds by declaring loudly. Then next step is to do something attitudinally, in action, obey the, the word. Now, yesterday I was in Bangalore and uh, Two of the people who are helping me in business, including one is my partner. There was some ethical issue about a business uh, income that is coming in. It was an ethical issue. And when I was praying, the Lord spoke to me uh, in, in, the, uh, in the book of Proverbs. So I don't want to give you the verse. If you read the verse, you'll find it's very pointed. Then you'll say, brother is indulging in all these things. No, it's not. So I had to give that verse to my, my, my friends. And they were wondering why I kept quiet for some time because this transaction has been happening for some time. So I told them, I admitted them. See, when you told me that this is the income coming, even I got taken by it, I must admit. But I'm not at peace. So it has taken me one week to uh, go before the Lord and say, I'm not happy. Why? And the Lord tells me, look at what you're doing there. Is that income right? And uh, that is when I said, Lord's speak to me further and he clearly spoke to me through the verses and I'm sending this to you. The moment I sent it to them, what the, my partner understood and he said, you're right, we will step back. But the other person wanted to go ahead and, uh, but he also is a Christian. So uh, what am I saying? I'm saying the Lord will sensitize us, okay? The Holy Spirit is the presence of God going to be with us forever. So forever, in every transaction, every step, we will need the guidance of the Lord. And the sensitivity is when we're losing the peace of God at some point of time, we know that there must be some wrong walk in our lives. You know, so the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be with and will be in you. He will not, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore but you will see me because I live, you also will live. Now this can be like very confusing, but what is Jesus saying? When you look at the word orphans, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you and be with you. He's talking about something that's going to happen in the near future. What is going to happen in the near future? He's going to be, he's going to die and he's going to be away from them for about three days. And then very soon, even though he's, coming back to them resurrected, he's going to leave them and he's going to leave the Holy Spirit with them. Now, the, the, the words that he's speaking to them about leaving automatically creates in them an orphaned feeling, a feeling of somebody going away. 
you know, a feeling of somebody going away. And that is why he's addressing that feeling immediately. He's saying, I won't leave you uh, as orphans. I will come to you and be with you. And how is Jesus going to come to us and be with us? It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the very spirit of Jesus itself who is going to come and be with us. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. He says, even though I disappear, I won't be in this world. You will see me because I live, you also will live. The life that we have in us is now the life that God has given us. And not that God has given every human being a life. And we are talking about that life. No, we are talking about the life of God, the life of God that he has given us. All right. What left Adam that day when he, Adam and Eve was the life of God departed from them. And that is why death came. in. Now God gives us the life of God comes back into our life. That is why we enter into eternity boldly facing death. Now, everybody will, people can argue when the life of God has come back, you know, like Adam, we should not die, no? Because Adam sinned, the life of God departed and the life of God was eternal. So eternity left a void in his life. He longs for eternal living, but he can't live, so he has to die. So when the life of God comes back, isn't it logical that we should stop dying, stop aging, stop dying, whatever. Um, so to clarify that, God himself in Christ Jesus comes and, put, and is put on the cross. So Jesus himself goes through death. Because the life of God is in us, it, we are able to defeat death by dying. Because we have on the other side, the one who has defeated death. We are going to be with him. So the life of God enables us to enter into eternity boldly and to face death boldly. On that day, you will realize that I am in my father and you are in me I, and I am in you. So when will we realize this? We will realize this when we discover the life of God living in us. Because I live, you also will live. And I am in you and you, on that day, you will realize that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love him and show myself to him. Okay. Now, this is, he's speaking about love. He's speaking about knowing the father. Because the context was, Philip was telling, show us the father and that would be enough. Okay. Now, Judas, not Judas Iscariot, the other Judas said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Now, this is beautiful because you should ask questions like this. This is a practical question. He's saying, Lord, you want to show yourself to us, but why not to the world? Because as your disciples, we are waiting for you to be revealed to the world. We are waiting for you to be seated on the throne and then we'll prove one-upmanship to the world. We followed the king. See, we are the ones who followed you. And uh, you, you people are criticizing him and getting after him, but he is God. Why don't you reveal yourself to the world? Why are you revealing yourself only to us? Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. We will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the father who said to me. So Jesus is talking about he and the father coming and dwelling in us. Now the question is not yet answered. Okay, what is the question not answered? Why don't you reveal yourself to the world? And why you reveal yourself only to us? Okay, now that is the way Jesus answered his question. He always goes in a little uh, different way or he asks a counter question back. Now verse 25. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit, is the one who is going to clarify these things to us. That why Jesus did not reveal himself to the world, but revealed himself to the apostles. So the revelation of the Holy uh, the revelation of the resurrection, the revelation, complete revelation of the, of the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection, everything is given to the apostles by the Holy Spirit. And why Jesus was revealed first to the apostles and then to the world. You know, that is the way that is the way God does anything. He always looks for the individual. Then, the, commu then the, the unity of the community. And then the world. 
And so the, his, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. What? Why you remind everything that said to me? Because this question is unanswered. So what will happen? That will remain in our mind. Now we think what we forget, the Holy Spirit will remind us. No. You see, we think that way. But there are some things in our mind that will keep reminding us of Jesus. Unanswered prayers, unanswered questions that we ourselves have about the deity, about why you do like this, why you are not revealing yourself to the world, but revealing yourself to us. That reminds us of Jesus. So what is God, what the Holy Spirit was going to do? He is going to remind us of everything Jesus said to us. What did he say? He actually stated a question. Uh, he actually made a statement. And the Holy Spirit will remind us of it. The word so remind. Which, yeah, yeah. So which means, which means yeah. that the Holy Spirit uh, will work on uh, you when you have the word in you, right? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. The word, right. is not, word is not there. The Holy Spirit will not be able to work. No. That is why the word produces faith. The absence of the word. You take two people. Okay. I'm not putting any name. Take two people. Take uh, two people. And one of them is a simple reader of the word. He's not like voraciously reading and faithfully Bible thumping and all that. You know, he's not doing that. But he reads the word every day. The other person is a good church going praying Christian, but he doesn't read the word. Mm. Okay. Okay. Very simple, two people. But you watch and observe these people. The person who is reading the word will grow in faith. The person who does not read the word will lead his life in feelings. Feelings. He will be carried away by emotions, feelings, and uh, you, you know, more of doing than of being. You know, it is the being that should lead to doing it. So, but you look at the person who's, who's not doing much of reading, but simply staying to his devotion of his discipline of reading. The, he will be growing in faith. That is why it says, and faith comes by hearing the word, hearing the word of Christ. When we read the Bible, our being hears the word and gets nourished. Yeah. In fact, uh, on that uh, part today, I was just, uh, you know, learning this uh, aspect of uh, faith. Yeah. With uh, regard to uh, uh, the gospel of Mark where the uh, rich young man comes to Jesus and says that I have done everything. Mm. Yeah, Jesus, uh, yeah. But then Jesus says, okay, you go and sell it and follow me. Yeah. And he became very sad and he went away. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. the question that was asked by this person was, the father was, why do you believe mm. God? Mm. Okay. Belief is not uh, something based on that God will answer your prayer when you pray. That is not belief. Right. Mm. Okay. Mm. Belief is not something that you will get it from God if you do something. You know, you yeah. give 100 rupees to a poor man. As an act, uh -huh. God will be pleased to you. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm. Belief is that in spite of your all the things that God can do or cannot do, mm. your belief in God, if it is true, Mm. will make you do things what Jesus has asked you to do and you can only do that. Mm. Which means, I can only give, I can, if I, my faith in God is, uh, is true, mm. I can only do what mm. God asked me to do. I cannot do otherwise. Mm. Even, mm. even if I am at loss. Mm. Even if I am at loss. Which, uh, you know, yesterday Charu and I were discussing about uh, you know, this particular aspect. Mm. Somebody has to give us uh, you know, some money. Mm. And uh, we really uh, needed that. Uh, and uh, mm. we, it's been going on for some time. Mm. So I was a little bit upset in between because, you know, I felt we, we lost it kind of a thing. Mm. But what she said was very making very, very, you know, big sense to me because whether they give the money or not, mm. our response to that situation mm. should be love. Amen. You know, that is true faith. Yeah. That is true faith. Yeah. You know, you pray, you pray, that is something which you do. Yeah. Whether they give money or not. Yeah. How is, what is your attitude towards that person? Yeah. That is what is, uh, that is what matters. And yeah. if it is a true faith, your mm. response should be love. Nothing Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Absolutely. No? So, Absolutely. Which, is, which is very important. So, a lot of us, 
lot of us can get into this trap mm -hmm. of religiosity as you yeah. keep saying no yeah the trap yeah. of religiosity where mm -hmm. we uh, believe okay if i say this many rosaries or if i do one chapter mm -hmm. of bible reading or yeah. if i fast on this particular day mm -hmm. uh, if i do all these things i will get yeah. some favor from god mm -hmm. it should be other mm -hmm. way around i am doing all this because i am because of my love for god not because i yeah. do this to love god i because the other way around which yeah. makes a lot of difference you know and you right. really look at it yeah then you will be then you will be free you know yeah. in worship otherwise you'll be burdened in your worship yeah you'll be wondering yeah. okay you know uh, i i mean i didn't do this thing today i did not uh, you know uh, uh, kneel down i did not do this i did not do that yeah. that becomes a burden yeah. you know which uh, right. that is what exactly pharisees were doing Pharisees were okay. forcing the people, uh, allowing them to, or making the you know the uh, the the weight more yeah. heavier, the burden yeah. more heavier, mm. that they were not able to fulfill it. Right, right. You're right. And this freedom you can experience only when the Holy Spirit reveals to us. No? That is very. That is another important thing. Absolutely, you're right. You're right. Now in this um, uh, see. It is not that religion is a bad thing. It religion is the basic step. See, we all yes, as infants, yeah. we don't grow into spirituality the moment we are born. Yeah. It is actually yeah. religion which takes us into spirituality. It gives us a certain framework, and spirituality means when we come to a certain age of thinking and wondering, we wonder why this framework is there, why it doesn't fit there, uh, why this should be right, and we come into that. And then for those of us who who seek further. into god and into a relationship with him the spirituality is becoming a first step but the problem is most people stay in the religion itself for a, for a lifetime that is where we don't come into spirituality and from spirituality come into relationality this is the this is the journey you know so we don't discard religion but when we take it up in such a way that the religiosity takes over everything then we lose the opportunity of opening the door to relationality through spirituality in fact Because yeah in fact too. this is uh, i was just uh, contemplating on this for last uh, maybe uh, you know mm. a few days because mm. today a lot of us are not able to not able to become free and yeah. do what god want to do see now the thing is in spite of so many experiences that we go through yeah or our prayerful lifestyle mm. we are all a lot of us are stuck mm. that is, what is the reason i mean, i'm thinking one reason could be because of this wrong understanding mm. the fact that you know uh, i need to fulfill certain criteria mm. qualify yeah that is uh, that is uh, something uh, which is not the right uh, approach right in terms yeah. of uh, our faith itself we think mm. that by doing this we can achieve yeah Correct. because if, if if that change does not happen Mm. if that change does not happen then even uh, even we will not be sincerely able to pray for others you're right absolutely you're very right no we think uh, we think uh, you know okay, you have to do so many things to achieve to enter into god's uh, you know good books uh, what how can uh, you yourself are struggling <laughs> how can you make others yeah yeah, yeah. see i belong to the uh, christ the king parish one of the toughest parish uh, parishes which went through a very tough time because you know, we had the language problems stoning fighting with the language groups and then the church was shut and all of that okay but during monday thursday time they used to try and make it in the early days they made a single mass that means we had uh, uh, portions of it in kannada portions of it in english portions in tamil and then malayalam so all the four you know some portions will be there and uh, there will be four priests so each will read his portion so it used to be a grand celebration or a grand mass what was happening was that people started getting irritated no we should have a separate mass and during this grand mass there used to be the washing of the feet now they made a quota system they said three people from tamil congregation three people from you know english congregation so the 12 people will be there for washing the feet all right now last year these three people were there now next year another three people and there became a politics for that okay and the people who got their feet washed 
will be will be sitting and chatting and coming back and their relatives would, oh today he got a special grace i this man never thought of washing anybody's feet after that he was happy priest washed his feet so what am i saying you know this is religion mm. religiosity they are happy that they were chosen their feet to be washed why is the priest doing that so you go why jesus washed the feet so you go and wash the others feet mm. no this man is happy that he is in the quota system for this year mm. you know and so so that is why the the damage of the symbolic the mm. symbolic everybody longs for the symbolic you know so because it puts him uh, puts the people out there on the dais and um, it shows them as seniors and then they come back and uh, uh, they talk about it uh, for the uh, for for the next hour or so and all of that but where is it translating into real life mm. it is the same place where all these elders were there fighting in the same place the church was shut down because the elders didn't come to understanding each other as language communities so what am i what am i saying here the real thing is what we should not miss yeah see these are the challenges we have we go for the symbolic we should never miss the real thing and that is why the holy spirit is so important yeah. what does he do he quickens our conscience mm. he quickens our conscience he enables us to step in and to step back step mm. in to in any to uh, when he wants us to take initiative step back when he wants us to take caution you know so i have found see today what happened uh, we were driving down from chennai and coming on the way we stopped for breakfast now my son has this, has this habit of carrying a copper water bottle with him that he likes it very much he carries it with him into the hotel so we went finished just my son and me were traveling so we finished and we came back got into the car and we already driven one hour he looks for his water bottle it is not there now it's a copper water bottle it's about 700 800 rupees so he says dad i think i left my bottle there so i'm just quietly driving okay now the thing is should i scold him for missing it or what can i do to find the bottle shall i pull over and uh, turn the car and go back all these things are going on in my mind the first thing that the lord told me is is absolutely no need to scold him so i became a little uh, joking with the lord i said then lord that means you're going to help me find the get the bottle back is it it no answer kept driving then suddenly one thought came to me maybe on the hotel bill you know the number will be there we'll call them so pulled over luckily the number was there we called them they checked and said so no water bottle so then now i am convinced the water bottle is not there so i told him we will drive forward so we continue to drive forward because the water bottle is not there right we continue to drive forward then i suddenly got reminded of a technique which i taught him in the spirit i said when you find something missing like you left a key and you don't know where it is okay you just pray close your eyes and say lord show me where the key is mm. and close your eyes and sit there quietly you have to create an initiative by saying when where do you remember last seeing the key that's all you have to do so i told him day i cannot close my eyes i'm driving you close your eyes <laughs> and you think where you left the water bottle last the guy was seriously doing it but before he closed the eyes he told me something very interesting he said um auntie is coming in the evening my sister is planning to come and be with us in the evening he says auntie is coming in the evening why can't we ask her to stop and check at the hotel he said man that's a good idea provided the bottle is there now this guy said the bottle is not there he said okay let me close my eyes and see where it is what close my eyes and see where it is it's all paradoxes man you close your eyes you can't see mm. but what he's he telling me he's going to close and see where it is that is also a statement of faith mm. because you 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 want to try something right so he closed and he, he said wait a minute i know where i left the bottle and he's taking the phone and making the call i said hey, do, do, can you speak proper tamil to convey to that fellow but in his he had already called the guy and then he explained to the guy there is a window sill so if you go there you will see that guy is looking from where he's standing and saying no sir i cannot see it. he says if you sit in my chair only you can see so this man went almost about to sit he said it is there okay so what am i saying i'm saying if i had fought with my son or scolded him the joy of finding the bottle would not be there yeah absolutely absolutely see the lord pulls you back hmm. he cautions you 
even when you want to be stern or admonish your child for something which you rightly admonish him. So what am I saying? This in these intricacies of life, it is a beautiful journey with the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And even when we sin, when I sin, suppose if I had gone ahead and scolded him and been tough with him, there will be a certain grief in me. But the beauty is you will experience the spirit of God also sharing that grief. Yeah. See, to have that grief alone and say, what a foolish thing I did. Oh, that is feeling. Mm. But to come to that grief and say, Lord, Holy Spirit, I just should have listened to you. I scolded him. I'm so sorry. And then the Holy Spirit will give you the love to go and give him a hug and say, I'm sorry. You know, you finally worked out a way to find. Don't worry, we'll get another bot. But that will come only if the Holy Spirit is able to share that grief. It is not going to come out of a reaction where we say, oh my goodness. And don't worry, man. I will buy it. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. No, it's, it's not going to flow like that. It, the spirit is gentle. Gentleness is the fruit of the spirit. So the Holy Spirit is very, very important. And Jesus, he says, my father and I will come and dwell with you. We'll make our home with you. Okay. Jesus is the word. Okay. Jesus is the word. And the father gives us the relationality. That means he is the provider. And how does the father provide? He has actually provided us the word. Everything is there in the word that he spoke. Everything he has kept for us in Jesus Christ. And how do we come to the sensitivity of these things? How do we come to the operability of these things? How do we know how to operate the word? Well, you know, I'm not trying to mechanize it, but I'm just giving it in parlance. How do we know how to work with the word of God? The Holy Spirit. He is interpersonal in relationships. He's interpersonal in relationships. Okay. So I was so happy today that I didn't have to even say one word to hurt my son. Because, you know, as I was driving, I was thinking, yes, Lord, I won't scold him. The Lord is telling more than you, he is missing the bottle. Ah, yes, Lord. So I will definitely not scold him. But that was a good bottle. We shouldn't have missed it. And then, you know, the whole solution falls in place. And we called him. Then we called my sister and said, when you're coming back, stop there and meet this guy. He'll give you the bottle. So it's a problem solved. So the Holy Spirit will, will sensitize us and keep us sensitive to the ways of God. Then Jesus goes on to say, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. But do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So today in this uh, episode, in this event, I did have the peace of Lord in my heart as I was driving back. I was driving in spite of not having the solution to finding the bottle yet or, you know, what to do with it. You heard me say, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. That means Jesus is telling, I'm telling two things. You heard me say that I'm going away and you also heard me say that I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father for the Father is greater than I. Now, many people use this and say, you know, so Jesus is a created being. Jesus is lesser than the Father. He himself is admitting it and all that. No. He says, I'm going back to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens. So that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not speak with you much longer. For the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. But the world must learn that I love the Father. And that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. For the Father is greater than I. What does it mean? It means Jesus is still in the assignment. And it is only after the resurrection that he is exalted back to the highest place by the very Father who is, whom Jesus said is greater than me. And then there is a small passage. I, have a, I will take one more minute to read this and we will stop for the questions. The work of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 16. Now, I am going to him who sent me. Yet, none of you asks me, where are you going? Jesus is asking them, ask me questions, guys. None of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. They are just filled with grief because Jesus said, I'm leaving and going to die. But actually in his conversation, he's speaking about more than dying. He's speaking about going back to the Father. Our boys are stuck up at the dying point itself. So that is, he's drawing attention to that and saying, you're already filled with grief because of that. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, 
the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So when we were, uh, when I was with the Divine Spark team in St. Anthony's Friday, one of the things when I told them we are moving away, um, they kept telling me, no, brother, you should not move away and all that because the group was growing very well. And I kept asking the Lord, how do I convince these people? Every, uh, somebody or the other calling me every day and telling you should not go. So I was just asking, Lord, you know, it's difficult. Give me a word to speak to them. And then, can you imagine, this is the word he's giving me. It is good <laughs> that I go away. <laughs> and I'm telling, see, I'm not Jesus. I'm not going to send you the Holy Spirit. But I'm quoting this verse to you. Unless I go away, the counselor work, you will not see the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. But if I go, you will see the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. This is what the Lord wants me to tell you. And then they, they, they accepted it. But today, I'm saying that's four years ago. That group has grown amazingly. And the kind of evangelization that they do, they are so passionate about it. And that's a job. Okay? Okay. When he comes, when who comes? The Holy Spirit. He will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness in regard to judgment. And righteousness and judgment in regard to sin because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Okay, so he's talking about judgment and about going to the Father and all of that. All of this is heavy. Whenever you read about Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit, it is not easy, it is heavy. Because there is a duality in it. The duality is, it is the Holy Spirit who is supposed to decipher it and make it easy for you. The words of Jesus is supposed to keep it heavy on you, to make you think, to, to get you uncomfortable and to get you wrestling with it. That is, that, that's, that's the intention of this being heavy. But at the same time, it's loaded with truth. So when you sit and unpack it sentence by sentence, uh, you will see that the Holy Spirit has a lot to teach us. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. So what is Jesus doing? He is saying everything. He's telling, I have much more to say to you, more than what you can bear. So what is he actually meaning? He's telling, I'm, whatever I'm telling you now, it is in seed form. I'm giving you a seed. It is, if, if I open up the seed, it's very heavy for you to bear. You cannot bear the tree right now. You know, but I'm, I have much to say to you, but I'm giving it to you in seed form. You can, it is more than what you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. That means I'm giving you in seed form. The spirit will tell you what is yet to come from the seed. The spirit is also listening to what I'm speaking right now to you. He will not speak on his own. He will speak what he has heard right now. And that is what he will interpret and lay out before you. Verse 14, he will bring glory to me by, he will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. So the Holy Spirit is the decipherer. He is going to decipher, uh, break it down, explain it, debrief it for us. And by doing that, he brings glory to Jesus and uh, he enjoys doing it. The Holy Spirit enjoys doing that. All that belongs to the Father is mine. And that is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. That means, all that belongs to the Father is mine, but the Holy Spirit will take what is mine and make it known to you. Look at the giving of the Trinity. Okay? So it is the Holy Spirit that actually activates everything that God has intended for us. He activates it for us. He brings it to, into actionables for us. He brings it into doings for us. He brings it into works for us. All right? And then the last sentence. In a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. So this is the teaching of the Holy Spirit that Jesus is placing before us today in the Last Supper. All right. So let us all go to Monday Thursday. Let us uh, not go to view something, but let us go praying to be part of something that God has started in our lives. All right. Yeah. So we'll wait for prayer. We'll okay. wait for questions and we'll close. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, anybody would like to ask? Any quick questions. I think it looks like we don't have today. Yeah. So we'll yeah. close. Yeah, let's let's pray.
Father, we thank you for the gift of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, that even as your son desires that everything that you have given him be made known to us, be given to us. And thank you, Lord, that that is not just remaining his desire, but he has given us his spirit to make it possible that we receive everything from you through him by the spirit. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful thing that you do in our life. Lord, help us not to just stay with the symbolic, but to participate in what you have in store for us. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. And we declare that you deserve all the glory. Thank you, Father. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 All so right. So tomorrow is for... Yeah. yeah same, same time. Tomorrow also same time. Okay. Yeah. We will meet at four and uh, we close it at five. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. All. Thank Bye -bye. you. God bless.